All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our call with uh, linebacker Tyler Elliston. As always, please raise your hand and I'll call on you. We'll start with Tyler Donahue. Hey, Tyler, how are you this afternoon? I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Um, wanted to just kind of go behind the scenes a little bit with us, if you could, on the last two years. We haven't really been able to talk with you much, see you much. What does the de development look like and what kind of a, a spot are you in your career right now in spring ball? Yeah, so I came from a small high school in PA, and I think that was probably the biggest factor of my transition when I got here. Um, I didn't see a lot of competition. I played a lot of tough teams, um, just maybe not the level of competition you'd see here. So my first year, even second year here, um, there's a lot of transitional um, things I had to go through, just like more competition. There's faster guys, there are bigger guys, and just kind of learning how to play. Um, so through those first two years, there's a lot of learning. There's a lot of learning, a lot of growing. And um, to the point I'm at now, I feel comfortable. I feel like myself again on the football field, which is, um, it's huge. Uh, I get to be confident. I, I feel more confident. And uh, it's been a process. The coach has been very awesome throughout the whole process, showing me a lot of love, showing me a lot of support. And I've just honestly been asking a bunch of questions throughout my time here, especially now, um, just really embracing everything as best as I could. Rich Garcella. Hi, Tyler. Thanks for doing this. What, what did you learn from Ellis Brooks, Jesse Lucetta the last couple of years? Yeah, so those are two guys that fantastic leaders, fantastic football players, and just fantastic people. Uh, my whole time here, they were always super supportive of me, always showing me love. And when it comes to the football game, like super intelligent. Football IQ was like through the roof. So any questions I had, they'd sit down with me, talk things out, explain them on a player to player level and just kind of help me develop. They're always like pushing me past my limits. And even even today, um, if I have questions, I could still reach out to them. And sometimes they reach out to me just see how I'm doing. And um, they they're extremely good guys. They're Penn State guys, and they just want the best for the team. Absolutely. Mark Brennan. Tyler, how have you kind of transitioned physically, or you know, transition maybe isn't the best word, but uh, where were you at uh, height and weight-wise when you got here? Where are you now, and how much kind of stronger and faster have you gotten? Thank you. Yeah, so that, that's a good question. When I first got here, uh, I'm pretty much the same height. I've been about 6'2 since I've been here. Um, I don't think I've changed too much. Uh, Weight-wise, I think I came in here just over 220. Um, I was around 14% body fat. And right now I'm sitting around 230, 233 in between there, give or take on the day. And my body fat's lower, lower range. I think last time I did bod potter was around 7%. Um, so I think the biggest thing for me is not necessarily the amount of weight I've put on, but the kind of weight I put on. Um, reducing the fat, obviously, it's going to make me faster. There's more usable muscle. I feel a lot stronger, a lot more explosive in the weight room. Um, just like things like my jumping ability, broad jump, stuff like that, stuff I work on my own, definitely see uh, progress there. Weight room, obviously, same thing. Um, we have a great strength staff here, and I was able to just really kind of just get stronger in all my lifts, bench, squat, clean, whatever it is. And then movement, which is probably the most important, um, gotten a lot faster. I feel a lot faster, feel quicker, feel a lot more twitchy. So um, I definitely feel uh, like a different kind of player now than I was when I first got here. David Eckert. Hey, Tyler, appreciate your time. Um, obviously, you've got a little bit of an organizational role there um, playing that mic spot. H how do you learn to do that? And, and where do you think you're at in, in that regard now? Yeah, I think really the learning part really comes from the people I've played with before. And like we said before, Ellis and Jesse, they both played Mike at some point. Um, those guys really kind of showed me the ropes, kind of how to be a leader on the field. And then there's guys like PJ Mustafer. He's my roommate too. So just showing like him talking to me about like just being a leader on the field, being comfortable and taking over on the field. All that like has helped me. Um, being a Mike linebacker, you got to be vocal. You got to be like a dominant figure on the field, whether that's physically, mentally, or emotionally. Um, and I, I've embraced that. I love being in the leadership role. I'm trying to grow as a leader. I'm trying to gain more and more trust from the players. Um, but yeah, there's guys that really just showed me like, just show up, be yourself, be a leader, be confident, 
and I'm using all that to play Mike Linebacker. Sean Patishnok? Hey, Tyler. Uh, linebacker at Penn State, you know, that's an iconic position. So outside of technique, what have you learned the last couple of years, including, you know, the, the type of mentality that you need to have to, to be a linebacker at Penn State? Yeah, there's a standard. Uh, the coaches always say the standard is a standard. There's no deviation. And uh, when I think about it, being from PA to thinking about LBU, being from Pennsylvania, playing at Penn State, there, there's a weight on your shoulders almost. There's a lot of pressure. But I think at the end of the day, there's guys that came through here and everyone has their own story. And the thing about LBU is you could come from anywhere. It's just when you go on the field, supporting each other and just making making plays. Um, I think altogether, the the camaraderie behind it, um, that's probably what I learned the most. Like Dan Connor, he's a part of the staff now. And just being able to talk to him about it and his experiences, and just going back on YouTube, watching Paul Puzlesny, Sean Lee, LeVar, guys like that, and just kind of really embracing the position I'm in, um, it really drives me. Uh, just say that. Like, it drives me to be a perfectionist, even though perfection is not, not a thing. It makes me want to be damn close. Max Ralph. Hey, Tyler, uh, appreciate your time. We've heard a lot about you and Kobe splitting some time at Mike so far this spring. Um, can you just kind of take us through both the competition aspect and just what your relationship is with him? Yeah, so Kobe, Kobe's a great guy. Obviously, if you look at him physically, he's ready. Mentally, he's ready. He's maturing. Him and Jamari have both matured uh, greatly. All the, all the linebackers have. Um, when you lose older guys in the room, everybody kind of has to step up, and I think everybody has. The competition itself is awesome. It keeps me in my toes. It keeps him on his toes, and it just drives us to get better. Um, and I think we're very selfless in it. Um, no matter who's on the field, even though we're competing, uh, we're really pushing each other to be the best versions of ourselves. So I think it's a very healthy relationship between me and Kobe. Daniel Gallon. Hey, Tyler, uh, at, at this point in spring practice, what is kind of the, the Manny Diaz on-field experience like and, and how has kind of your relationship with him evolved going from the classroom to the field and, and just over time? Yeah, so Manny is uh, – Coach Diaz has a lot of fire. And that's one thing I noticed when he first got here um, during, like, uh, the bowl trip. He's kind of more laid back. I think he's just really just taking everything in. But just the moment he had us and we started practicing together and – um, he, he shows a lot of passion, and I love that. It makes me want to play for him, and he wants to do well for us, and he wants us to do well for him. So um, I think he's a great coach in that aspect, very good leader. Um, he understands the game very well, and he understands the player very well. Um, so I'm super glad the relationship has gone the way it has so far. Um, pretty open, open line of communication. Uh, I think that's really important out of a mic and a coach, especially D coordinator and linebacker coach. Um, so we have a good relationship in that aspect. And um, he just really just drives us to be the best player possible. He wants us to be playing downhill. He wants to make TFLs. He wants to, like, create disruptions. He wants to be, be tight in coverage. So he he's a great coach and so far has been fantastic. Tyler Donahue. Hey, one thing that uh, we talked about on the practice field with Manny last week was Adiza Isaac and, and his ability to, to get going and really help this defense out. What has it been like seeing him back on the field in front of you? And, and what kind of a boost will this defense get from him being healthy? Yeah, he's he's a fantastic player. I'm super glad he's back. The, the athleticism he has is unmatched. He's super twitchy. He's super fast. He has a great understanding of the game. Um, it almost seems like he never had an injury. Uh, he came back, he started playing, he's, he's working out with us again, and um, it's really good to see him. He's going to be definitely a, a huge aspect of our defense. Um, obviously, his pass rush game is, is, is critical to us. Um, but overall, run defense, just mentally knowing what to do, being a leader on the defensive line, it's, it's huge to have him back. Rich Garcello. Tyler, why did you want to play at Penn State? And can you tell us what it means to be a kid from Schuylkill County playing at Penn State? Because I, I understand how big uh, it is there. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, I'm glad you, you asked about Schuylkill County. So uh, playing at Penn State was kind of a dream come true. Um, 
I was kind of recruited pretty late, uh, just overall from from colleges. I think I was going to my senior year before I got any attention. Um, Penn State was obviously my last offer, and I committed almost immediately. I think I, the one they offered me, I said, "Yeah, I'm 99.9 percent sure this is where I'm coming." And my mom's like, "Yeah, I'll give the the 0.1 percent you're coming here." So. Um, it was super good. It was a dream. It was a dream. And I'm glad everything worked out. Um, being from Schuylkill County, um, everyone's a Penn State fan. I always say this story. We have a, an ice cream joint um, it's called Chill Out. We always go there. And if you go in the bathroom, just wash your hands, go to the bathroom, whatever. There's a big, a big picture of Beaver Stadium. Um, and I just think it's funny because you can never really escape Penn State football from where I'm from. Super small town. Um, when I got the offer, it was almost like they're about to throw a parade for me. That's what it felt like. My neighbors had jerseys out hanging out their windows and everything. So um, it was super important to me, but I think it was super important for my community as well. And, you know, I, 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 I love that. Um, whenever I go to practice, I think about them and it drives me to be the best version of myself. Seth Engel. Uh, Tyler, can you detail John Sutherland's transition to the linebacker group? Yeah, so since he played safety, he he brings a different aspect to the room. Um, he's extremely intelligent. He has a lot of experience and coverage, and he has a good understanding of the secondary in general. So when he came into the LB room, he had a little transitional phase playing linebacker, but he took it on full head of steam. He's done very well with it, honestly. Um, he plays hard. He's relentless. He does everything right. He does everything that he needs to do and, and more, um, but his – I think the biggest thing for him and, and for us as a unit, um, his knowledge of the game has has elevated all of us. John Petitna. Hey, Tyler, I thought you said, did you say you're roommates with PJ Mustafer? I am, yes. I, I mean, he's got a big personality. I can only imagine what that's like. How has he been, you know, as a teammate, as a friend, and, and having that close proximity to him, just how has he helped you develop during your time here? Yeah, so when I first got here, he's obviously already a big dog on the team. And uh, I ended up moving in with him, uh, just kind of how things worked out. We kind of needed two more people, uh, three more people, me and my, me and my Nick Dawkins. And um, so we moved in with some older kids, and he was one of them. And at first, I was a little intimidated, I'll be honest with you. Um, but like you said, he has a great personality. We started opening up, started talking. And like now I could honestly say, like, we're super close friends. I'd call him one of my best friends, and I think he'd say the same. Um, which for me, it's huge. He's a, he's a leader on the defense, leader on the defensive line. So we, we just, we watch film all the time together. We hook it up to our TV, me and him go so, through stuff all the time. It's just, it's just nice to have that resource. Um, it's nice to have that personality as well. And it, it makes, uh, the relationship real smooth. Time for two more Tyler Donahue. Yeah, we, uh, we understand you had your first scrimmage uh, last Friday and probably a lot of anticipation to get out there and, and kind of ramp up the intensity. How do you think it went for you guys defensively, especially from that communication standpoint? Because I'd imagine maybe there were some more live bullets than what you normally have on the practice field. Yeah, I think the, I think the scrimmage went well overall. The offense threw a lot out of a, a lot at us, and they they executed very well. Um, but the defense threw a lot at them, and we we executed very well. Uh, I think overall it was a, a great scrimmage. Um, I don't think anybody slowed down. Uh, the communication was very smooth. We played fast. We played hard. We made plays. Um, I think overall it was it was awesome to see. Uh, bring everything together. Um, I think that was one of our better practices so far as a, as a unit. Um, we've definitely gotten better every day, but that was the first time that um, I felt like complete domination uh, by defense and playing how we should play, and we felt comfortable. We felt like the chemistry was mixing, and since then, it's been elevating every day. Last question, Rich Garcella. Tyler, you're obviously competing with Kobe. You talked about that earlier. What are your strengths? What do you bring to the table that you think will help you win this job? I think personally, the biggest thing about me is that I'm a very passionate player. I'm passionate in, in terms of relationships. Um, I think it's important that there's a relationship within the team. I want to play hard for the guys that, that I have love for. Um, those guys are, are, are my brothers at the end of the day. Um, so I'm just doing my best to be super, 
super personable um, to be a leader and, and to help everyone. Um, and I think I think this, it's hard to say because Kobe's the same exact way. I think that's a special thing about Mike Linebacker. Um, the people that are put in that position are usually people that care about the team. Uh, I'm not saying nobody cares about it, but you got to be a special individual. You got to be very passionate. You got to love the game and you got to love the whole process. And me and him both do. Um, so I think just mentally, uh, just approaching every day, trying to get better, trying to learn the game as well as I can, are things that, that I focus on. But as a defense, as a unit, that's what we always focus on.